This is the first part of a two-part series in XML-based layouts in Android. The objectives are listed here with a timeline for when they appear in the video. Okay, so your homework prior to watching this video is to go out to developer.android.com, go out to the guide topics, user interface, that's the URL you see listed here, take you here to user interface. We're not going to cover every aspect of user interface. We're going to cover just the basics of user interface so we can go on and look at other things and come back and cover some of these other topics as we have a need to know and a need to use them. So for today, we want to read the section on user interface, section on the view hierarchy, section on the layout, and the section on the widgets and inputs events. Beyond that, I'd also like you to come down and read the section on common layout objects. When you're reading the section on common layout objects, the only two I really need you to pay attention to at this point is the frame layout and the linear layout. There are other ways of doing layout as well, the table layout and relative layout, but we won't be discussing those at this point. So if you do that, that'll be helpful uh, for this lecture to already have that information. So Android uses the term view to discuss its individual components and its graphical user interface. There are two types of views, primarily. There is a view that will be subclass to create a user interface that you actually see, like a widget. Think a label that we're going to call a text view or a text box that we're going to call an edit text. And there's another type of view that's called a view group that organizes the other views in the manner that you'd like think from Java, Swing, or AWT as a layout manager. So view groups organize other view groups or other views, and views are a piece of user interface that you actually see. So view groups are made to organize views. And then I want to come down and just talk briefly about the layout objects. I'm going to be only dealing with two of them early on, the frame layout and the linear layout. A frame layout is generally designed to hold one item, one view that you will actually see. And of course, this is a view group, a frame layout. And then the other type is a linear layout that's designed to hold multiple items on it. Let's take a quick look at those before I go any further. In other words, if I have a frame layout, that just means I'm I have a layout that's designed to hold one item inside it. And if it takes up all the space, that's great. If I happen to add a second thing on top of it, and it's smaller, then I will still see the item that was placed on first if the item I place on second is smaller. If the item I place on second is larger, then it will simply cover that first item completely, and I will only see the second item. That's a frame layout. Okay. And the other type of layout we're going to stay with is called a linear layout. And on the linear layout, that gives you a place to put other views. And if we have its property set to vertical, that means as we add things, we just move them down vertically. And of course, likewise, we can have a linear layout. And if we set a particular property, its orientation property to horizontal, then we'll just keep adding things horizontally as we add them to the linear layout. Okay, and more on that as we go. That's just the large overview. Now, I thought a great way to start this would be to take a look at the Hello World application again and see how those are already in play. So if we take a look at that, I've come in and I've created a basic Hello World project and I've done absolutely nothing to it. In my previous demo, I had added a button. I've even taken the button off. And this is the out-of-the-box Hello World project that you get for free 
and I've done nothing else to it. And I wanted to do to help us really internalize this because this is critical. We completely understand what's going on with these views is I'd show you a tool. Now here is, remember I created my Android directory at the root of my C drive and I placed Eclipse and the Android SDK in there. And largely, most of what you want to do, you can do right from inside of Eclipse. If we come in and double click on the Android SDK folder and I see AVD Manager, well, that's this right here. And if I see SDK Manager, well, that's this button right here. And most of the things I want to do, I'm happy to do them with Eclipse because Eclipse interfaces with my SDK toolkit for Android. But there's something I want to do now that's a tool that's better used from within this tools folder here. And if I look inside the tools folder, there is this batch file that we can run called a hierarchy viewer. And what I want to do before I start this hierarchy viewer, okay, so what I'm going to do to get started with this is go ahead and fire up an emulator. My 2.3.3, seven inches is great for this demo. And my emulator is building. I'm going to come in here and see that my phone's been completely launched and go ahead and open up my phone, get it to the main menu, and I'm going to launch my Hello World application up to my phone. I changed the setting while I was offline, and so it's asking me which device to choose rather than automatically selecting, and I'll be showing you that setting later on. Now it's bringing up my Hello World application. I can see that on my screen, and I'm going to come back here to my uh, tools folder and double click on the hierarchy viewer. The hierarchy viewer brought up the window that you're seeing right now and it's highlighting this activity that I currently have running. Now if I double click on that activity it says loading the view hierarchy. This thing is awesome and it's showing me the views that we're using on our Hello World application out of the box with no modification.